Hi, I'm Dale Mason, the author of the 10-Minute Bible Journey. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But first of all, I'd like to introduce myself as also the publisher of Answers Magazine, which is the official publication of Answers in Genesis. Uh, it is the flagship publication. It's a magazine that comes out once every two months. It is filled with uh, faith-affirming facts uh, about creation versus evolution, uh, about biblical authority, how we know the Bible should be our final authority in all areas of life, and about issues of culture that are happening all around us. Take the current COVID situation and the uh, coronavirus. I'm the publishers, publisher of this publication, work with a wonderful team of people, uh, writers, editors, and outside uh, authors as well. And uh, we just love putting this out. We love seeing people benefit from the publication. And right now, that issue, that issue has this Kids Answers section inside of it. Uh, every issue has a Kids Answers section inside of it. It's a eight page uh, fold out uh, that includes a big poster for the kids, uh, uh, a find it picture, a, a word scramble, and a, um, a Bible study that mom and dad can do with the, with the kids. Uh, once they receive that particular issue of the magazine. This one, this particular issue, deals with the resurrection. So if you are a current subscriber, I urge you, go pick up your copy of uh, Answers Magazine, draw out this kids section, and uh, maybe even use it with your kids or your grandchildren this weekend or next. Well, I am the author of a book called The 10 Minute Bible Journey. Uh, it's a book that came about uh, really because I'm, I'm one of the vice presidents at Answers in Genesis, and uh, several years ago, I was sitting in my office having a conversation with my, my boss and, and a friend, Ken Ham, and uh, the issue uh, that was on my heart, an issue that was on my heart came up, and I shared with Ken that I was frustrated. I had been looking for a book that dealt with uh, the chronology of happenings, the chronology of scripture, that put everything in order, a, a book that uh, integrated apologetics, proofs that confirm that the Bible is true, and it was written on a layman's level that uh, a father could use with his, with his teens or with his family and not feel like an idiot uh, as he read uh, the book to them. And we discussed it for a little while, and then uh, Ken looked across the desk at me and said, well, Dale, you're the one with the burden. I think you're the one that God is calling to write it. So uh, long story short, uh, it took several years, lots of research, uh, but I did. I wrote it and uh, we're just so thrilled with the way that God is using it uh, today. It's 52 accounts, basically so that you can use just one a week with your family or read it 52 days in a row uh, as a private, as a individual uh, for your personal devotions. Um, and you're going to go from Genesis to, Revolu to Revelation in just 52 times. Uh, they're, they're readings of only about five minutes each. They're not big, long readings. Uh, the average person is going to read, read these in five minutes, five and a half minutes each. And there are lots of references in the back of the book for those who want to know, well, how can they say that? How's this? Where does this guy get this at? Where does this come from? So lots of great references. Hundreds of them are in the back of the book as well. But it's written on a, uh, on a very layman level. Um, this is the account of Balaam. You know, so all the way through, you've got just beautiful, wonderful, high color pictures. Uh, and it's drawn for uh, the purpose of drawing the family and friendships together. So what I'm going to do is start with chapter 45 right now. We're going to read chapters 45, 46, and 47 over Easter weekend, uh, beginning tonight. And each one uh, deals chronologically with the events of, uh, of Easter. So the first one deals with Jesus' final weeks, the weeks leading up to the crucifixion. So it basically is the, le the weeks leading up to the triumphal entry and his trial and uh, the garden events and just, just before the actual crucifixion itself. So we're going to start there. That's the one that we're going to read tonight. And then join me here again tomorrow night at this time. Chapter 45, Jesus' 
final weeks. AD 33, these events took place circa about the year AD 33, a real event, a real time in history. After Jesus came down the mountain of his transfiguration, Many who saw him were awestruck and immediately ran to him. In the midst of the miracle seekers, a desperate father fell to his knees. With tears streaming from his eyes, he pled for Jesus to heal his demonized son, who was thrashing on the ground and foaming at the mouth before them. In compassion, Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit that had inhabited the boy for years. He ordered it to come out and never return. As the demon departed, it shrieked and convulsed the lad violently. And when he suddenly appeared lifeless, many gasped, he's dead, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him up. As weeks passed, Jesus continued to teach and heal, even raising a man from the dead and his fame spread even further. After passing through a crowd in Jericho, where a dishonest tax collector named Zacchaeus repented and was saved, Jesus' final week on earth began. He and the 12 disciples arrived at Bethany, the hometown of his friends, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, about two miles outside Jerusalem. On Sunday, five days before his crucifixion, the holy city overflowed with untold thousands of Passover visitors, and Jesus' presence caused jubilant celebration to break out. He was ushered into Jerusalem on a young donkey, and many who witnessed his amazing miracles triumphantly praised their Messiah. The euphoria was infectious. Many yelled, Hosanna! Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. They spread cloaks and leafy branches before his donkey and expected that he would soon overthrow the harsh Roman oppressors, perhaps that very week. On Monday, Jesus again forced animal sellers and dishonest money changers out of the temple. He had done this before. Then he healed more blind and lame. He had done that before. On Tuesday, he returned to the temple and answered the questions of jealous religious leaders about taxes, taxes, divorce, and more. When he saw a poor widow donate two small coins, he gathered the disciples and revealed an unseen reality. The widow, the widow had given more than all the rich people because she gave everything. That night, he stayed at the Mount of Olives, not far from the temple, and taught privately about coming signs and the end times. By Thursday, the dreaded culmination of his life mission was imminent. Jesus and the Twelve arrived at the upper room of a home for the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and he demonstrated servant leadership by washing their feet. Later, while they were still reclining and eating, Satan entered Judas Iscariot, and Judas left. After the first communion that night, Jesus taught, and they prayed, and then they sang a hymn. When their last supper together ended, they walked to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus shared that all of them, all of them, would abandon him that very night. Shocked, Peter vowed that he would never disown Jesus. Finally, the Lord took three of his closest disciple friends to the Garden of Gethsemane. Knowing what lay ahead, he was in emotional agony and even sweat blood as he knelt alone in prayer. Repeatedly, however, the three disciples fell asleep. Then, when Judas arrived with many armed soldiers, he betrayed Jesus with a kiss. As all the disciples fled, envious religious leaders had Jesus bound and taken to the courtyard of Caiaphas, the high priest. 
Through the cold night, Caiaphas and the others relentlessly sought false evidence against Jesus. Finally, just before dawn, they charged him with blasphemy, spit in his face, blindfolded him, and struck him with their fists. All the while, Peter watched. In fact, in fear, he cursed and repeatedly denied knowing Jesus. And the third time that he denied knowing Jesus, when a rooster crowed, Jesus looked across the courtyard directly at Peter, who ran in shame and wept bitterly. That's account 45, chapter 45 in the 10-minute Bible journey. Tomorrow night, we'll read chapter 46, which is entitled Jesus' Crucifixion, a very hard chapter. Uh, because we go into the detail of what was involved in the crucifixion of Jesus. But very important that we as Christians, as those who call upon the name of Jesus to be saved, understand what he went through to make it possible for us to be forever with him in heaven. So, and then uh, on Sunday night, we will... Uh, cover the ascension of Jesus, the time between the resurrection and the ascension. Amazing, amazing time of 40 days. Uh, don't miss it. Be sure that you're back here for Sunday night as well. And I just want to say uh, once again, uh, if you're not already a subscriber to Answers Magazine, consider it. Go to AnswersMagazine.com. Uh, you can read past issues there, samples from those past issues, including samples from the Kids Answers section of the magazine, which is, which is there as well. Answers Magazine is an amazing uh, tool that comes to your house once every two months and uh, just gives you the, the latest science and the latest, latest uh, theology uh, uh, understandings from Answers in Genesis writers, Answers in Genesis speakers and scientists and researchers. Um, and it's an award-winning publication uh, for design and content uh, worldwide. It's won scores of awards. So Answers Magazine, Kids Answers, all in one package, comes to your, your house six times a year. 10-Minute Bible Journey, again tomorrow night. Don't miss it. See you then.